Today I'm gonna to talk about how to tell the difference between food allergy and food sensitivity and how to best test for them, so stay tuned. Hi there, if you're new here, my name's Amanda Malachewski. I'm a certified functional nutrition health coach and a digestive and allergy detective. I help you figure out what's going on with your food allergies and digestive troubles and help you figure out what's causing them so you can stop the problem. If you'd like to hear more about this, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit the bell and to be notified when I post a new video every week. There's a lot of confusion about food sensitivities and food allergies, especially when it comes to testing for them. Today's video is in response to a viewer question about this subject. So by the end of today's video, you'll be able to tell which one you likely have. You'll understand which food sensitivity testing method is the best one to use, and you'll have access to the do-it-yourself food sensitivity testing tool you don't wanna be without. I use these methods to help my clients figure out their food sensitivities, and I know you can too, so let's get started. So let's start by clarifying the difference between a food allergy and a food sensitivity. A food allergy is when you have an allergic type response to a food that you've eaten, and this often looks like things like a swollen tongue, shortness of breath, a closing airway, or hives. And these symptoms typically happen very quickly within eating the food, usually within minutes or an, up to an hour. And if you have this kind of an allergy, it's obviously a life-threatening emergency and needs medical attention right away. A food sensitivity or intolerance, on the other hand, is when you get other types of symptoms from eating particular foods, and these symptoms might occur up to a few hours or even several days after you ingest the food. This includes food-related symptoms like bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation, headaches, joint pain, fatigue, these kinds of reactions. The first way to test for food allergies is to get an allergy panel done by a medical allergist. And this is usually done as a pinprick on your skin, and then they look for a reaction within a certain amount of time, or sometimes it's done with blood testing. What's confusing is that some people will come into my office and say, I already had a food allergy test done and nothing turned up on the test. And while this result may be true, the reason this is happening is because there are other kinds of food allergies or sensitivities that don't show up on this test. And that's because this test is only testing for one type of food sensitivity, which is an IgE mediated allergy. There are other types of food sensitivities that this test will not pick up. The second type of testing for food sensitivities, that's what's called an IgG food sensitivity panel. And this tests for a different type of food reaction than the IgE testing. Some of these tests are available to consumers and some of these require access through a medical provider. The two that I like to use are called the mediator release test from Oxford Biomedical Sciences and the other is from Cirex Labs. This test looks for an IgG mediated immune response to food triggers and this is different than what you're gonna see on an IgE panel. This kind of sensitivity is more likely to cause a delayed reaction of symptoms. So the things we talked about earlier, like joint pain, headaches, fatigue, and digestive symptoms. Or in some cases, these food triggers won't cause any symptoms at all, even if they're turning up on your test. Here's what a results panel for an IgG food test looks like. It sort of gives a reactivity range for a huge list of foods that are commonly eaten. And generally speaking, you want to remove the foods that are most reactive for say two to three months, foods that are in the medium reactivity place for one month, and then other foods that are in the green still, you don't have to remove at all. And then after you've removed them for a period of time, then you reintroduce them one by one and test for a reaction. So a lot of people get upset when they see a lot of reactive foods on these IgG food panels. And what this says to me when this happens is that there's likely a, a significant amount of leaky gut or intestinal permeability going on. And what this means is that we need to invest some effort in sealing the gut lining and repopulating your gut with beneficial bacteria using probiotics. So if you wanna hear more about this, you can check out my video, Probiotics for IBS and SIBO. The third way to test for food sensitivities is to use what's called a food symptom diary where you track your food alongside your symptoms along with an elimination diet of some kind. The food sensitivity tests are limited in their results because there are lots of other kinds of sensitivities your body can be experiencing that won't show up on either the IgE or the IgG food tests. These include things like histamine, oxalates, or FODMAP foods, just as examples. And so really the only way to get really clear on what's actually going on with these sorts of sensitivities is to use an elimination diet that's targeted based on your symptoms. So you choose one that seems appropriate for you 
and then you use the food symptom diary as you reintroduce those foods one by one and check for reactions. If you want to give this a try, I'll leave a link below for my food symptom diary that you can download for free. And you can also check out my earlier video called how to use a food diary for IBS. Some labs that offer stool tests claim to be able to suggest an appropriate diet for you or to tell you what kinds of food sensitivities you have based on your stool test. I don't really place much value in this option for stool tests. To me, the value of stool tests is to be able to assess the health of your colon and what's going on with your microbiome in your colon. And this can definitely give you a lot of ideas and suggestions about how to move forward with your case, but I don't think it tells you very much about what you should or shouldn't be eating. For more on this, you can check out my video, Gut Microbiome Testing for IBS. Have you done a food sensitivity test and did it help you make better decisions for your care? Tell me about it in the comments below. So I hope that this video has helped clarify the difference between food sensitivities and food allergies and has helped give you some actionable steps you can take to begin assessing your individual situation. If you've still got more questions about how to figure this stuff out, I've put together a roadmap to gut recovery, which gives you a step-by-step -step process for improving your gut health. So you can get your free copy of that by heading over to confluencenutrition.com forward slash roadmap and I'll leave a link for that below this video. Or if you're ready for some help customizing what you're already doing, I'm an expert at helping people create a customizable, doable plan. If that sounds like help that you're ready for, you can schedule yourself a free 30-minute assessment session to meet with me and talk about what it would be like to work together. You can do that by heading over to confluencenutrition.com forward slash contact and I look forward to meeting you. So get out there and start tracking your food alongside your symptoms to see what's going on with your food sensitivities. And if you like this video, please consider liking and sharing with your friends and family. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time.